this particular video, we're going to go through running an independent t-test in JASP. And so if you'll remember, an independent t-test is, is when we're looking at two groups that are independent of one another on a particular dependent variable. And so these can be existing groups or they can be people, groups to where uh, the, the researcher randomly assigned the, the participants to two conditions, a traditional experimental versus control group, or, or they, they got the drug and the other group got the placebo. Uh, type of situation. In this case, we're going to work with an actual data file from a campus life survey for, with, with traditional undergraduate students. And so the dependent variable we're going to focus on here is this questing variable, a religious quest. So in this particular scale, it's a 10-item scale, and basically what it's getting as a higher score means that the individual is still asking questions about spiritual issues and seeking out those questions and um, and is still very open um, to to ideas and to and to thinking regarding the questing versus the lower scare, score would just be more they're, the person's foreclosed, not really thinking about um, uh, about different ideas related to to religious questing. And so our independent variable for this, why don't we, we'll we'll focus on one of the variables that we have is gender. And this this particular survey, we're looking at gender as male and female. Um, so two groups, so we're going to compare those two groups on religious questing. So we go here to t-test, and remember we're doing an independent t-test. So we click on that, and um, we scroll scroll down to find um, our variables. And you can see there's a lot of variables in this particular data file. Um, the data file that you will work with will, not, will be trimmed down, um, so a little easier to manage. So I've got gender in as the grouping variable. The grouping variable means the independent variable. And I'm going to put questing over here um, as the dependent variable for this. So I put that over. I put that over there. You know, look at comparisons between uh, between the two groups. And um, for here, um, we look at the the different aspects of what we want. We probably want some descriptives here, so we get that. We want the effect size, so looking at what the magnitude is of the difference between um, the the two groups. And we want to do some assumption checks. One is about normality and the other one is about quality of variances. So one is to say that the normality is to say that these are really from normal distributions um, for, the, for the two groups. And the other one um, for equality of variances is getting, at, um, is getting at whether or not the standard deviations or the variances between the two groups are are equal to one another or close enough to equal to one another because that is one of the assumptions uh, within an independent t-test and so you'll notice for this we've got our our data here from this um, so here's our t-value right here you'll notice that t-value is less than one um, that means we really have no difference between these these two groups at all uh, um, uh, 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 t-test of one would indicate that the mean difference is the same as the difference we'd expect by chance, which is no difference. Anything, any t-value less than one is not going to be a statistically significant difference. We have our degrees of freedom here, 780, uh, 786. Really, this can work as a proxy for us in terms of the sample size. So for each group, um, it's n, the total number in that group, minus one. And so this tells us total um, because we had two groups where the minus minus one for each group that we had 788 um, people in total um, in this analysis. Here's our p-value, our p-value of 0.793. So again, that's telling us the probability of getting a t-value this large is close to 80%. It's about 79%. That is, that that's not a rare occurrence. We would expect that to take place. That's why um, we fail to reject the null hypothesis or we retain the null hypothesis in this case. And then the Cohen's D for this is uh, 0 0.02. That's, it's very small, um, almost negligible in terms of the effect size that take place here. Our assumption checks um, for this. So for um, normality, um, you'll see here that each of them, um, if this was less than 0 0.05, that would mean that it would violate um, the, the normality assumption, and it's above 0 0.05, and so we, we feel okay about the normality for, for each of the two groups. You'll notice it's doing it for, um, for both men and women um, for this. 
And then, um, and then down here we have the quality of variances um, test. And so basically for this is the uh, same kind of thing. If this would were to be less than 0 0.05, then we would have unequal variances. And I would show you what we would do. I'll try to find another example in another video to be able to show you that. Um, but in this case, um, there's uh, the, uh, the variances are similar. And so that's the example here. Standard deviations is just remember, it's just the square root of the variance. And look at these standard deviations. They're very similar to, to each other. And that's what that's telling us here. So we don't have a violation of that assumption um, for this particular one. And then you'll see down here, um, women were, were group one, men were group two. Um, you'll notice we had a pretty big difference in terms of the, the sample sizes within each group, but those means were almost exactly the same between the two groups. And that's what we, that's what we saw up here. Um, that's what that's telling us. And our standard deviations are pretty similar as well between, between these two groups. So in summary for this particular set of data, um, we have no significant difference between, uh, between these two groups. They're quite similar in terms of uh, their religious questing. Okay, so now you've analyzed the data. What you need to do next then is to, is to write up your results. So one of the first things I want you to do, you'll notice you can go up here to this upside down triangle, um, click on that and click copy. And so that's going to copy all of that that we had right there. We go to a Word document and, and paste it. And now we all have it in a Word document. You have it completely in the Word document. Um, and then up at the top, I'm showing you an example of how I would write up the results. One simple sentence, I would, I would write up the results for this. So you see there is no significant difference between women. And then you'll notice in parentheses, I have the mean and the standard men and then me and standard deviation for men in religious questing so i'm talking about here the and then here's our little shorthand that we use for statistics so t um telling us the t test we're using a t test uh, in parentheses we have the degrees of freedom um, that we found down here uh equals 0 0.26 and so i put that here by the way whenever it's um less than one it is helpful to put the zero before um the decimal place off of that so it's so it stands out to the reader that this is less than one and then comma and then the p equals and so and we usually by the way just go two decimal places so um, 0.79 comma and then d equals and so i've got the the cohen's d here as well you'll notice too in terms of writing up in apa style that the symbols that we have here for mean and standard deviation and t and p and d um, that those are all italicized and that's the other thing that we do in APA style so whenever there's a symbol we italicize the symbol so you see it's as simple as that in terms of writing up the results and in that very short sentence we've told the reader a lot um, within the these particular results In this video, we're going to look at a different t-test called a paired t-test or sometimes it's called a repeated measures t-test and so you'll see my data file here. Um, this is uh, this is a study set up to where let's say we want to we want to look to see how people drive the number of errors they make and maybe in a closed course while driving while either listening to music, which would kind of be our control condition or driving while while talking on the phone. And so so the numbers here represent the number of errors that they they made. Um, you'll notice here is each of the drivers. So we have 14 drivers. Um, and they went through the course twice and then the number of errors recorded. Now for this to be con the study to be conducted correctly, right? They didn't, they shouldn't all drive through the course first um, with music and then driving by the phone that we did counterbalancing here. Some um, dr drove while talking on the phone first and then driving with music second and vice versa. Um, so we assume that that's what what had taken place within this particular study. So we're we're, we're looking here at the number of errors that may, they made, and we're, we're looking at a comparison between the two conditions to see, okay, is there a difference? Is there a significant difference in the number of errors made um, when you're talking on the phone versus just driving while um, while listening to music? So we would go up here to t-test. and paired samples t-test is how it's how it's listed in JASP. And again, in some others, they might be it might be called repeated measures t-test or dependent t-test sometimes as well. 
And so we're, we're pairing up our two variables. And so we're not pairing up the driver, but we're pairing up the driving with music and driving with a phone. And just as an aside, um, notice here that in the in the data that it was brought up, um, it's have it has it this little symbol over here. That means that it was um, taken in as ordinal data, and I want um, I want it to take it as a as a scale variable, uh, as a as an interval or or a ratio scale to see it in that way. So I click on here, that little tab right there, and I change it to scale, and I do it for this one as well. Okay, so now I go back to my paired sample t-test. Um, I combine these two together, and I put them over. Those are my paired variables that I have. Um, and in looking through, as always, I want an effect size. I like to have the descriptives as well. The descriptives plots can be can be helpful too. And so I've, I've got my information here. I'm going to get rid of this so it's not uh, confusing to people. And so we've got, um, we've got our main results here. And so you'll see the T statistic and it's a, it's a negative T statistic because we're taking driving with music minus driving with phone. And so you remember that number of errors there were smaller as compared to here. And you can see that down here as well. Um, and then we've got um, the T value. So this is telling us that um, the mean difference it, between, uh, between those two situations is a little over three times larger than what we'd expect by chance. Here's our degrees of freedom. We had 14 participants. So 14 minus one gives us a 13. Here's our P value. Um, 0 0.006, that's a probability that we would get a T this large just by chance, which is pretty remote. And then here, here's our Cohen's um, D, our effect size. That effect size is pretty, we would consider that to be a large effect uh, for, for this set of data. So down here, we've got our descriptives and we see that on average driving with, when they drove with music, they made less errors as compared to when they were driving on, on the phone. And we can say it was just, a statistically significant difference between the, those two. And you'll see here as well, we've got um, our descriptive plots here with our standard error bars and the, the, the means between the two. So how would this look in terms of uh, writing up the results? So first let's copy and paste our, our results here. So we're gonna copy this, paste it over here in the Word document. We've got, we've got our data listed here. And then here's our write-up. So participants made significantly less driving errors while driving while listening to music. And then you'll note I've got this mean of standard deviation, which you see down, in, down here, um, compared to when they drove while talking on the phone. And we've got our mean standard deviation um, here is what, that I, they use for that. Um, and then we've got uh, our shorthand. Remember our statistical shorthand that we write things up. So this was a t-test. Um, it was 13 degrees of freedom that we see right here. Um, the t-value um, is listed right here. Remember, we tend to use to usually just go two um, decimal places with that. We've got our p-value that's listed here. And then we've got our, our D, our Cohen's D, that's listed here. And we put, uh, we put all of those in, and we've, we've got our results for, for this particular paired samples t-test.